Welcome back. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe as usual. Uh, I am back on the uh, buggy I'm doing the build out for, a friend of mine. Now this came to me with a six liter mounted in it, made it to a turbo 400. Uh, a few things on this. You've got to do all the hard stuff so that then you can do the plumbing and wiring. Uh, this doesn't have any of the hard stuff. The engine is literally bolted in to a transmission and that's about it. So we're gonna have to do a lot of work just to get the engine put together. And I thought this might be a valuable video just because anytime you're doing some of these hot rod conversions, nothing fits right, nothing is a bolt on. Uh, it all has to be either made, figured out, changed, modified. So that's where we're gonna start with. Now, one modification that has already been done to this, this is a truck engine, and whoever did the engine install and built the skid plate around it put an F-body or a Camaro-style oil pan on it. So that part of it's been done. Uh, the manufacturer of this chassis, which is Jimmy's, uh, recommends to go to a Camaro or a Corvette-style front pulley configuration. But since they don't want to answer their phones and I can't find them, I have to kind of figure out how to make them. So uh, we'll get that done and a whole bunch of other stuff and see where we end up today. I usually don't take on projects like this. And I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be the one that completely finishes it. Uh, a friend of mine dropped off this Jimmy's chassis buggy. Uh, he had a guy supposed to be building it and then the guy had life happen and had to walk away from it. So it is nowhere near needing uh, wiring at this point. Uh, that's what I thought we were going to be doing is just some wiring and plumbing, but we're a long way from wiring and plumbing. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is give him a small parts list. Uh, we're going to need an intake, injectors, uh, obviously a low profile intake so it'll fit under the hood, uh, throttle body, mass airflow sensor. Uh, I am, I've already pulled the uh, driver's seat out since it was just bolted in kind of half-assed-ish. And uh, the battery tray is under there. So I'm going to install a battery. You can see the engine transmission, which is a Turbo 400. Seems we have some missing parts here. Like, oh, a torque converter and a flex plate. Yeah, probably going to need those before we can start this. While I'm pulling the engine, I figured it's easier right now because there's nothing in the way. No wiring, no plumbing, not much else. Uh, the flex plate and torque converter along with the adapter for the Turbo 400 are going to be uh, the furthest thing in I need to get to. But while I'm doing this, I just take note of other things that I see that aren't there, like the crank sensor's not there, there's no bungs for oxygen sensors, uh, a lot of stuff like that that we'll be making a list and adding as we go uh, along this build. To mate a Turbo 400 to an LS, you do need this adapter ring to support the nose of the torque converter. Pre-loctited bolts, flex plate, make sure it goes correct side out, not in. Fifteen, thirty-seven, and seventy-four pounds of torque. Um, I've got this set at seventy-four, but I just read the numbers on the second pass. Now I've got to pin the flywheel because uh, it turns the engine. So, converter's in all the way, put a little grease on that. 
This is a brand new transmission, so I'm not doing anything to it. Get your spacer, which will adapt an LS to a turbo 400. These are torqued three stages up to 74 pounds. Uh, now I can just drop it back in. But that's why I didn't pull this the rest of the way out because I just needed to install those two items to set this back in. Putting this engine back in, I have discovered that it was probably all welded in without any spacers or washers. And now when I pull stuff apart, things are like springing and boinging. So now I've got to pull the engine forward just about an eighth of an inch. And I'm doing that with a chain because I have to be able to pull it forward and then set it down and put bolts in. So here we go. Kind of a cool thing about Chevrolet again. So the front of the engine's here. I flipped the intake around backwards so the throttle's going to come out underneath the cowling of this buggy. Uh, I also could have flipped the uh, fuel rails around because they will fit either way, but I was able to bend the inlet here and it looks like it just perfect fit for this position here and now I can I'll figure out where I want to run it later but this is a good place for it and I wanted to do that mostly because then I can check my fuel pressure here instead of fighting against the firewall uh, the other thing I did have to do is I did have to put a slight bend in the uh, little burp thingy here for the coolant so that I could uh, steam port somewhere. Uh, the radiator's in the back, so, so this will have to go probably into a, a hose or a T or something. I'm, of course, finishing everything on this, but they did a pretty decent job kind of making these headers fit. I got to go a different route myself, but they didn't put a bung in for oxygen sensors, and you need oxygen sensors when you're running these uh, computer control engines, especially LSs. So I just ordered some bungs and I've got these steel dummy threads that I can put in and hold it in position while I mark it. And then I'll cut a hole and weld her in. installed now. I will disclose I did not weld these uh, down pipes, but kudos to someone who made it work with what they had to use, but it's pretty thin pipe. It's pretty tough to weld. Kept blowing holes in the edges. Next up, I'm going to install a water pump and figure out how to make all the pulleys fit. Don't know if this is going to work or not, but... Okay, give it a shot. Your aluminum. aluminum heats up far faster than the steel. So far, so good. Another nice thing about when you use some kind of an oil on the tap, it pretty much catches all the thread waste. There's really nothing in there. All right. The 
other one's going to be a little bit tougher because I think that's metric. UV thread tap. Ooh, I like it. So it starts getting tight because these FIP threads are tapered. So I look inside, make sure I've got three or four threads below my stops here. So they should work just fine. And you don't want to use steel. You want to use brass. The reason being is you don't want bad chemistry in metals and it creates some weird corrosion factor. Now the big test is making sure it fits. Now I am real sure those aren't going to leak and I would like to have those instead of rubber hoses. So uh, I think we got a winner here. This is one of the reasons why I do all the hard parts first. Run pipe, run rigid tube, run mounts, run water pumps. You can move wire and you can move hoses to a lesser degree around that stuff. Um, but if you run all this stuff, you can't run a hard pipe around something else. So same, same thing works when you're building a house. You run your hard stuff, then your soft stuff. And that clears now. I've, I've got a little flat spot I massaged into that upper frame but that's okay, in case I have to remove either of those, I can actually access them now. Now that the water pump's in, I'm gonna start figuring out how to get the alternator and the power steering done. The alternator's pretty easy. I'm using an ICT billet uh, adapter to move it to the passenger side of the engine, and various spacers come to set it at either F-body Camaro or truck engines. And you got to measure these bushings, make sure you get the right one in the right place. And lo and behold, the one that they said was the right one is the wrong one. So I just go with what fits. Once I have all the right bushings set up, uh, get them bolted into the head and the water pump, then I add the turnbuckle. Now the turnbuckle on the alternator is replacing a tensioner. That's the only way to get the belt adjusted on and off, etc. Now this is a GM style alternator that's designed for Premier Power Welders. We're going to see if we can make the power welder fit in this unit. If we can't, these brackets are still the same configuration for a factory GM alternator. Okay, alternator's in. I think I'll be able to run 
I'll reduce her up to here somewhere and then I'll have to cut in somewhere either back there or I can tap the steam port into the upper hose. Okay. One less obstacle. We'll see if I can make a power steering pump work next. I initially rough cut a piece of quarter inch plate, smoothed it out, and now we can build a bracket for the power steering. Here's where we're at so far. Had to put a little bow in this just to clear it over the piece of housing. I'll have to enlarge one of the holes just to give me a little bit of adjustment. And then I gotta figure out how to get a pump to it and then space it to the block so my pulley distance is correct. I ended up slotting this just to make sure everything stayed straight. Now I can figure out how to mount the pump to this and then I'll be able to shim this bracket out and figure out how I'm gonna need to bring it out to the same level as the pump. This bolts to the head, and then I drilled separate holes for the pump. That way I can make sure that the pump sits flat. And this will be spaced out, so I don't have to worry about nuts and bolts. I can wash, and I think I've got these facing in a pretty good location. Okay, next. Again, I don't have a CAD, but I'll get these cleaned up a little bit. These are the right height now. I'll spot weld them in so that they don't rock, uh, just in case, and I'll weld my cut side down. That way, if there are any indiscretions, the weld will take that up in the low spots and these will sit flush on the high side. I think I'm gonna wait until I have this on the vehicle to weld the triangulated hole. That way I don't have to worry about my slot shifting. Just to be on the safe side, I bolted these two in, bolted this to the head, spot welded it on the vehicle. Now I'll finish welding it in. And last, just clean it up so it looks nice. It looks like it was made for it. I think this will work. I'm gonna throw a little paint on it. I'm gonna throw a little aluminum colored paint on it so it'll at least kind of match the other pulley on it. I don't think these will have a problem with rocking and I don't think they'll have a problem with bending. I've used this heavy metal for engine mounts and such. So uh, this should work okay. And there you go, one power steering bracket. Just gotta go get some bolts now. There's the bracket belts on, the adjustment is the turnbuckle over here. It should work just fine. Now we ended up removing that alternator that's used for uh, a welder and went back to a factory GM alternator. Number one, it fits better. Number two, we were just flat out of room 
for places to put that welder's alternator. So this is how that finished out. I think this is a good place to stop uh, this video, a good break point. Uh, getting the engine in, bolted together, and start getting the bracketing, the things that you really can't change or move as you go. Now, what I've done on this video has actually taken the place over several weeks and months, mostly because I either wait for parts or I'm doing something else at the same time, which may interfere with something I'm doing now. So. Uh, keep in mind, I'm trying to group things together that kind of fit for that video and the idea behind that video. But as we go through this video series, uh, you'll probably see what I mean, that you want to put this bracket on so that that hose fits around it or move this so that fits around it. Uh, there's kind of a lot to doing uh, a conversion on something, or in this case, just building a new car. But I really like the LS type platform, even though this is the truck engine, it's an LQ, it's not really an LS. Um, if you're doing a resto mod or a retrofit truck or a hot rod or a street rod or any of that, a lot of this applies and crosses over. So if you understand what's going on on how to make this engine fit and then eventually run, start and drive, uh, should it be a piece of cake on something that was already pre-built? This is pretty tight quarters to work on in this. It's kind of tough getting wrenches in places, but uh, I'm gonna continue on on this series. I really do appreciate you watching and please like, share, and subscribe. I'm gonna try to end the videos during wheeling season with wheeling videos. We'll see how long that goes until I get a real long video. Uh, again, thanks again for watching and we'll see you later.
on where his rear ends up his front has plenty of room it's the rear that we don't know where it's gonna go and then it gets light
forever. those couple Austin powers I like the straight better the, either way it kind of is a little looky but I don't I wish I'd have done this this felt better he did and it's it's easier that's much easier than the other way yeah. Go, 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 go. Turn left. That's where it's easier. It's less scary.
turned a little bit to the right it might go to the right yeah that wheel clear that and that might roll over <laughs> 